through my warm up I do to hit a seven pound deadlift, my full back workout, and also what I do to recover so I can do it again the next week. Let's get into it. deadlifting shoes that are high platforms like this and like that you want me nice and close to the ground so I usually go barefoot or I'll get deadlifting shoes like sumo shoes basically just a rubber platform be nice and close to that ground nice center of gravity I'll start nice and light no matter what weight you're pulling pull it like you're pulling your max weight um, fast switch muscle fibers are working to get you that big deadlift and not really high pressure for this one. Girls let it tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Not like fire on the phone. If you wanna touch my piece, use caution. Go like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beat. Yeah, those are those pulls. I don't actually pull from the floor. I'll create tension first. So, big thing for my deadlift is you're not just yanking out the floor. You're not pulling it, you're pushing yourself away from the floor. So to do that, you need to build a lot of tension. So the first thing you'll see me do and I'll start pulling before I even bend my knees. So I'm gonna pull, I come down, and that weight's floating on the ground. I have full tension before I even start pulling. So if you do it right, you should breathe in nice and deep, build a strong core, and then you coming down to get that, that bar underneath you, like get yourself under the bar, will create enough tension where it comes off the ground so you're already pulling to 25 before you even start to pull. Please get on your knees. Came from the jungle, up in the trees. I got a few tricks up in the sleeve. One wrong move, I'ma let out the let out the shoes. Check out. Easy. Let's go. Another big thing for me when you're deadlifting, once you get heavy, anatomically everyone's built different. You're not gonna see the same pull for every single person, whether it's sumo, conventional, they have long arms, short arms, long legs, vice versa, whatever it is. You're gonna find out that what your best pull is gonna be. Like a lot of times people say, oh, you round your back a little too much. It's actually kind of safe, it's safer. So if I'm too rounded, or I'm arched like this the whole way through, for me, I pinch my back. I injure my low back more often when I'm too rounded or too arched. So when I go to pull, I get a natural rounding going in my upper back. And that's actually, doesn't mean I'm losing tension, but I'm so tight. I know when I'm gonna lose my tension, but that little bit of rounding is actually good for me because I have longer arms and longer legs and a short first torso. So for me, being here is too much. That slight little rounding, I'm still strong throughout, but I'm not doing this. There's a difference. So a little rounding in your deadlift is not a bad thing. My piece, you take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put them in the cage, never let out the. Let out the, let out the yeah. I hear them chats in the noise, move too quick, can't. St I did super set up, man, do it back, or I'll be in here for three hours. Doing heavy rows with some uh, small muscle work, some maintenance. A little rear delts. Imagine you're pulling your arm away from you and not straight back using your scapula. As you're pushing your arm out that way. If you do it right, you shouldn't be a lot of weight. I'm gonna pull it slightly below your shoulder, start a little higher, bring it slightly lower. So mid-workout, I like to add a simple sugar and a carb. Not sponsored, but uh, love these. Um, when you work out, you burn glycogen, which is sugar, in your muscles. So I like to replenish that so my workouts are intense the whole way through. Superset lats back to back. On your knees, came from the jungle, up in the trees. I got a few tricks up in this. With this one, you want to stay forward a little bit. Lean forward over your knee. You're gonna drive that knee as far forward as possible instead of back towards you. You pull them this way, you're using your bicep. The idea is pull your elbow forward and really use the front of that lat. You almost engage your core too to help out with that. 
bottle up in the trees. I got a few tricks up in the sleeve. One wrong move, I'ma let out the let out the let out the big shoes. Check out the crease. Go like I'm big foot, step on the beat. Make a man's run till he step out the cleats. When the whole place scream, gotta get out the. Here's the reason why I have some stuff like this. 25, 45, and then more way down here. I'm trying to overload the top of the pool. So the initial pull shouldn't have a lot of pressure because most weight's right here. But as I pull it higher and higher, it adds more weight into the pool and into my tension on the row. Kind of working on the squeeze, that top end, that last little bit, that little squeeze right there. That's what we're going for. Yeah, I, I am trapped in the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I am trapped with the boys. Maybe I see wrong, we'll do these. They sit really close to the pad like this. They lean back, they're using the shoulder blades. I want you to put your butt as far back in the bench as possible and dig your chest into the bench and lean forward into it. Pushing yourself constantly forward while also pushing your arms out and away to hit the rear delt. So you're gonna shoot shoulders forward, keep them forward. Just reach out really far. Thing. We're doing a wide pull down. A lot of people say this is lats. The way I do it, it's not lats. Lats are going to be more inside, neutral grip. I grab it nice and wide. And I'm pulling more and putting my chin instead of down. Hit my upper back, my traps. I do this last, go a little heavier, and try and pause the bottom for like a second or two for that squeeze. It's too sharp with the prize. Right girls better tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on the pan. If you want to touch my visuals, cuss me. So a big thing I see what people do with traps is they use way too much weight. I mean, yeah, it's good to submit the muscle with 150s and just shrug and like bounce a little bit. But near the end of the workout, I'm trying to get contraction. I'm already tired, so I'm gonna grab the 75s nice and light. And instead of just like bounce like this, I'm gonna drop my elbows up and back and try to really roll my shoulders back and get that squeeze in my trap. Stop that. So, a very fundamental thing a lot of people skip at the very end of workouts. I like to roll out and uh, stretch. I don't stretch beforehand. Long story short, don't stretch a cold muscle. So wait until the end. I like to wait until the end. Uh, for back day, I mostly use a lacrosse ball, but when I deadlift, I like to roll up my lumbar spine as well with the roller. So we're gonna start putting that in your mid back. I like to cross my arms, open up my back. Just roll up and down. I get a few cracks here and there. When you find a tight spot, for me, it's right here. I'm gonna put my hands on my head. Elbows wide, open up. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for joining me through my uh, heavy deadlift and back workout. Appreciate you guys sticking around and uh, hopefully learning Stop something, that. you know? Go ahead and comment your favorite back workout and I'll see you guys later. Stop that. Yeah.